where did it come from? Outer space? Who knows? Now, I've been asked time and time again over the years to review the blob here on Shitcase Cinema, and I finally caved in. Kind of. Now, this isn't the original 50s blob, nor is it the 88 remake. Oh no, this is something completely different that I've only just recently discovered, and I'm so glad that I did because it's complete shitcase cinema gold, and it's called. Beware the blob! Yeah, seriously. Now, this is a shitty 1972 sequel to the original blob, and it should be in everyone's top one movies of all time because it's amazing. I could talk about this film all day, but we don't have time, so let's get cracking. So, say hello to Marianne and Chester. Now, the opening 10 minutes of this film are so engaging, you'll just keep rewinding this section time and time again. Not for hours, but for days on end. It's that good. See Marianne talk to the kitten about food. See it call Chester's name 101 times. And see Chester go fishing, which means he just sits in his tent in the house drinking loads of beers from a flower vase like an asshole. So, anyway. Chester randomly found the container one day, apparently, and brought it home with him. And sure enough, it's the blob inside which lets itself out. How? I don't know. Who cares? Films like this are above and beyond explanations. So it kills a fly, and then the cat, and while she's standing around talking to herself, probably saying Chester for the 102nd time, the blob gets her. Chester! And she just faints. See, this actress was in another film that I reviewed many years ago called The Beast Must Die. And she was the beast as well. Just a pointless fact. Our main man Chester doesn't give a shit though, because he's pissed as a fart on his fishing trip. Oh no, sorry, he's now watching the original Blob on TV. Priceless. Moving on, this woman called Susan... Oh, sorry. Actually, let these goon boys greet her. Good day, Miss Clark! A little louder. Good day, Miss Clark! How are you, Miss Clark? I'll get to the Boy Scouts and their leader in a bit, but we need to stick with Chester. So, Miss Clark, also known as Lisa, goes to visit Chester and just check this out. What do you mean, what's wrong? He's just relaxing in his chair while cutting strawberry jam and screaming to himself. Don't fucking laugh at him and run away, woman. So she runs away to get a guy called Bobby. They return to Chester's house and he's not there, sadly. No, please, that's where it happened. He was, he was sitting in the chair. And uh, the thing came over him and he was screaming. And he dissolved. Whoa, 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 he dissolved? You ran off laughing, you stupid bint. You didn't see him dissolve. Man alive. So anyway, in respect to the seemingly dissolved Chester, let's see how popular it is to say his name. Chester. Chester. Here, Chester. 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 Chester? Hey, Chester! Chester? Chester, Chester! 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 Chester is dead! So, I'll be honest, once Chester is dead, nobody steals this show quite like he did. The main characters from now on are Lisa and her stupid moron boyfriend Bobby, but let me quickly mention the superb scenes with the Boy Scouts. They pop up for no reason, which gives it that wonderful stock-like footage in Godfrey Ho's Ninja movie. I mean, you see them say hello to Lisa, and of course, goodbye. And that's it. Brilliant. Oh, but then later on you see the boys pissing the leader off by banging marbles together. Do you recognise this guy? It's only the king from Spaceballs, aka Dick Van Patten, so this movie instantly gets more brownie points. So Lisa tells the cops about the death of Chester. Nobody cares whether it be the law or her boyfriend. I mean, that's nice, isn't it? And let's see another silly death scene, because it's Halloween time and we want to see some killings. Oh dear me. So Lisa and Bobby are driving home talking jibber jabber and he opens a present because it's Bobby's birthday everybody. And beware the blob. Now it covers the car but then it fucks off again and don't you just love the reverse effect here and how Lisa's voice doesn't sync with her mouth. And what's she on about? Where are the horses? What horses? <laughs> Lives makes no sense. I just want to wrap this up now. Oh hey, what do you do when you see the blob out on the road? You get out of the car, you run up to it, stand there like a dildo, and die. Bingo. Basically, the plot of this film is way for thin. It's a bunch of people with nothing going on, except our main man Chester being a fisherman and his tent necking beers, of course. Oh, yeah. And people just dying in the lamest ways. Like here at the bowling alley. Hey, anybody there? What's going on? Everything okay? What's going on? 
Two of our friends were killed tonight by this creature. I love how it doesn't show a thing and then cuts straight back to heartthrob Bobby. Just show us some horror, man. It's Halloween. Or at least show us a guy in a wheelchair getting flung down some stairs. So the blob has decided to take over the ice rink and kill a bunch of people. Look how someone is just holding it in front of the camera lens. It's very creative and awesome. So Bobby, Lisa and the ice rink manager lock themselves in a room while the cops try to shoot the blob, which does nothing, although it does look like the ice rink manager is trying not to laugh here. Now mentioning him, he popped up earlier on in the movie when Lisa crashed into him nearly, then Bobby ran over his beard, so he doesn't really like these two very much. But hey, his acting is top notch, I mean he really elevates this film to new levels. I honestly think the actors are messing around most of the time. Take this here for example, this cop is playing with a coffee machine, although you can't really see. Then he stupidly looks directly into the camera, smiling. Really? This is like Godfrey Ho or Ed Wood style movie making. So, if bullets won't stop it, if crosses won't stop it, if electrocuting it won't stop it, if Chester screaming won't stop it, then what are they going to do? Stop it! 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 The sheriff wants to burn the building down and all this time I've been wondering what the hell was the point in the Boy Scouts, but then they pop up just to give the sheriff a lighter to use. Now I think that that kid said you should have seen what it did to Mr. Engelman. Basically, Dick Van Patten did a runner, he just quit when he realised what garbage he was actually making. Meanwhile inside, Bobby figures out that you freeze the blob to defeat it, so he turns on the ice rink and there you go. The sheriff gives a victory speech. This is the most incredible thing that we have ever seen. And while he talks, the ice melts under this spotlight here, the sheriff looks down and sees it on his boot and that's the end. What indeed? Slap that face on a t-shirt. Now here's 10 points I'd like to make about Beware the Blob. Number one, why does Chester, the great one, crack open a beer and drop the bloody ring pull into the can? What, does he want to choke on it? You goon! Number two, sipping a beer must be done with the sound of complete satisfaction like Chester does. You must do this. If you happen to be drinking right now, do it. Number three, Marianne talking to the cat for what seems like a lifetime with the most pointless, inane dialogue ever. Is that motivation for you? Does that activate your glands? Activate your glands? What? Just stuff your face. Absolutely make a pig of yourself. Do you have a secret life? Secret life, huh? It's like they just spliced some random sentences together from somewhere else and thought that nobody would mind. Why the director thought we needed a two minute scene of her feeding the cat is beyond me and you can tell the dialogue is just dubbed in. So why not put something more appropriate in there like the sound of Chester sitting in his stupid tent while sipping on beers for two minutes? <sighs> Number four, continuity is on top form here. For example, entering Chester's house during the daytime for two minutes only to leave at night time. Guess time flies when you're having fun at Chester's crib? Number five, a hippie goes to a barber's who claims he is a sculptor. Are you a barber? I don't cut hair, I... I sculpt it. Charges the guy $400 for a haircut and he willingly pays... $400. Okay. And then some of the blob just pops up and sticks to his arm and that's just bullshit, man. Number six, Burgess Meredith pops up as a homeless guy in a cameo for no reason, like most of the people in this dirge. All I wanted was for him to just come out with some Mickey quote from one of the Rocky films. I mean, it's not asking too much in a pile of sin like this, is it? Nope, but his death scene goes like this. And bam, it doesn't show a thing. It just makes you think that old Burgess was probably high on some shit thinking that he's at some party. And then bam, it's on to the next pointless scene. Priceless. Number seven. Lisa asking her dumb friend if it would be hard to get Bobby over to the house for a surprise party in which she says Just Bobby. Yeah, oh, do you think it's gonna be hard to get him over here? Oh, I don't think so. Then about 15 seconds later, she asks this Hey, do you think you'll have any trouble getting Bobby here? You goon! Number eight, balloon in the face, bitch! Bye. Number nine, some goon driving along crashes and screams and it reminds me of Plan 9 from Outer Space. 
Never to return again. Number 10, looking for the sheriff and asking some random waitress in a bowling alley. See the sheriff. What? The sheriff. Hey, is the sheriff here? Sacked. The sheriff. And as a bonus, number 11, here's a fat, bald Russian guy in his bathtub with a dog. Yeah, they look like a slipper at the blob. Go on, fats. This film is great garbage, and I could say so much more about it. It's daft, but it's serious. It's boring, yet exciting. It's crap, yet it's rocking. It's just 86 minutes of pure entertainment, so go grab some beers and give it a watch. Four out of ten.